what, what, because very few people, if any others that I've ever met, uh, can remember that far back. So how come you can remember what was happening in the room? You're absolutely right. Most people can't remember. For some reason, I have a, a very good memory. Um, I can't answer your question as to why I know, just that I do have a... So what, what do you remember? From I have a very clear memory of a face, um, just a face, no real distinct features, and then suddenly being aware that there was much more to this world than, than I knew. Um, it was a far wider spiritual experience. And then it just closed down, and that's all I remember. And your first time you came face to face with an alien was when you were about sort of six to eight months. No, I would have come face to face with such a creature much earlier. The oh. one you're referring to, I think, is a little bit later. Okay, so w when the first one then? About three months old. Three okay. Months, four months old. And what does what does this alien look like? Because obviously we have images in our mind of the ones that we see, you know, in movies or those that sort of image. What did your alien look like? You're absolutely right. Hollywood's very good at putting out little creatures that people know as greys. Uh, this one researchers call a mantid. Or in America, it's referred to as a mantis. Uh, it's a green creature. It's about seven foot tall. And this one wore a robe or a cloak, purple colour. Um, there we go. That's one of my drawings there. Oh, OK. And um, the, the creature uh, literally reached into the cot that I was in. I remember it distinctly. It had wooden bars, green, yellow, red, blue, with like an abacus, painted abacus on the top. And this creature just reached and lifted me up. Um, and then I was actually tilted over to look straight into its face. So these are experiences, and um, you don't use the word abduction, but you use the word contact, because yes. you, you are a willing subject, yes. um, a willing participant. So from the moment there, when you were obviously very young, uh, and, and you were meeting them in their various guises, um, when was the first time that you believed that you had contact outside of your living environment? I want to say the word abducted, obviously, but when no, were you taken? When did no, you go? That's a very um, incisive question. It's a very good question. Um, in those early days, I wouldn't know they were aliens. To me, they were just things that came to visit me, and they were not distinguishable from my real family. Um, Operation has been heard, completed. I never built up any sort of scaremongering or, or fear of them. Um, I think from about 1963, that was my first experience of being taken off the earth into a craft. And what did they, can you remember what that looked like? Oh, absolutely. It was, it was a, not a traditional Hollywood-type uh, flying saucer. It was a teardrop-shaped craft. If you can imagine a teardrop, like a water drop, but with a blunt end going forward and the pointy end at the back. Wow. And one of the, one of the um, aliens wanted to be your mother or said that she was your mother. And that must have been quite confusing. Because, I mean, how old would you have been then? We're very young. Very young. That's what I mean. It's quite a difficult thing to comprehend. And you had your human mother. Yes. And that did lead to a bit of confusion yes, there for did. you, didn't yes, it? it did. And in fact, you called your human mother Daddy for a while. Correct. Because you couldn't work out why you had... Well, why would I need two mothers? Exactly. So I already had a mother, so this person can't be my mother. It must be my daddy. Um, and then as you get older, you realise that certain things are not acceptable in human society. So I you know, stopped saying daddy and mummy and got the words right and learned not to be open, not to discuss it, because outside of the very close family, most people can't handle it. And so this progressed through your through your childhood and quite early on you lost your virginity to one of these aliens who now this is quite a this is quite a confused part of the story here because from what I read the alien turned themselves into the woman from the Fry's Turkish Delight advert. <laughs> Yes, this is holographic, so I wouldn't have actually lost my virginity. Um, this is a holographic image. Um, we think we have some wonderful technology here on this earth, but the technology that I've seen far surpasses anything that we have here, or at least anything that the military tell us they have. Um, this was a holographic experience. How old were you? Uh, that would be about 1965. What age were you then? I would be about five or six. You six lost your virginity, yeah. virginity at six years no, old? No, I didn't say that. It was a holographic yeah. So you had a sexual encounter with exactly at six years old. Absolutely. Yes. So age doesn't matter to them. Uh, no, because it's about experience. It's about um, your soul. I know in the West we don't really understand souls, but in the East and in the Bible they actually understand souls very, very clearly. You went on to have non-holographic sex with a, an alien called a lion lady. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and. Although you weren't attracted to her, yeah. you said that wasn't really what it was about. It wasn't like what we have here, where there's sort of, for the majority of people, there has to be a sort of attraction. It was for other means. Um, 
This is an incredibly difficult subject for most people to understand, and I fully, fully appreciate that most yeah. people can't get their head around it. Um, we're talking about creatures that have the ability to enter your mind, to go into your mind and give you images, um, and to make you think one thing when actually you think another. So I think these creatures would have actually um, come into my mind and made me appear to love them. Because otherwise, um, you wouldn't actually uh, have a, a uh, sexual reaction with anybody unless mm. you felt something for them. Yes. Um, so I think it's more to do with that than anything else. Does that not bother you, that they're um, doing that? Well, I mean, I'd be quite upset <laughs> if someone came into my mind and convinced me that I fancied them. Yeah, the thing is, I've, I've seen these creatures ever since I was very young, yeah. um, from a very early age. And when you realise that humanity is not the only thing in this galaxy, in this whole in this whole that was a UFO. Well, if, only if it was. <laughs> only a fly. It could land on the White House lawn, couldn't it? Um, when you get used to these creatures um, and you realise that mankind is literally just a pinprick in a yeah. massive constellation, um, some things become less important. I can I can just get my head around that. In the in the great vastness of the universe, I think it would. I always thought it's hugely arrogant to assume that we might be the only ones that were here. But, but why did they pick you? What is their agenda? Do they, do they plan eventually to take over? Um, that's a question that I've asked them. And I've always made clear in all of the presentations that I've done that I don't consider myself special. I don't consider myself important at all. And the best way to answer it would be to give the answer they gave. And they said that Earth scientists uh, trap a wild animal, put a, a tag on it, follow it when it has cubs. They'll put tags on those cubs and they'll follow those wild animals for 20, 30 years, generation after generation. And in the same way, these creatures follow generational lines of humans right back from Egyptian times, Babylonian times, Sumerian times. So this is what they followed your soul through the generations? Correct. Right and okay. then just to answer the other question that you, you said, no, because if they wanted to take over the earth in the traditional Hollywood style, yeah. they'd have done it in the Stone Age, when all we would have had would have been bows and arrows. When was the last time you had an encounter, and what was it? Um, it would be about six weeks ago, um, and that would have been just a, a general encounter for a health check. They checked your health? Absolutely. And are you in good health? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In alien health? I'm 53 years of age. And uh, I thought you were going to say you're 553 years old. I'll tell you what, if I would, I would start, you know, marketing some wonderful medicines. Yeah. But why? <laughs> but when you say you're just picking you, the Labour councillor from Whitby, um, it, it, you would have thought that, did they have some sort of grand plan for you? Were they, were they you know, think, oh my God, we thought this guy was going to be Prime Minister? <laughs> No, when they when they picked me, as you call it, I wasn't wasn't a, a Labour councillor. I was a very small child. Mm. Mm. But they would have known what you're going to become. Oh, they see the future. I think. Sorry. Sorry, no problem. No, it's okay. Go on, ladies first. Okay, I was going to say, um, did you realise when you came out and finally spoke about this? Because you said earlier on that within your family, you know, they said, don't, let's not talk about this outside of the confines of the family because people don't understand. And obviously, you've come out and you've said it, and it's gone very public, and we're talking about it now, and people have said he shouldn't be worried, we, we don't want him as our councillor anymore. How do you feel about that? Okay, well, that's old news, that's old hat, because when I first went public about three years ago, the same angry people who sit on their armchairs and get very angry, um, I'm sure it's the same people, made the comment. And all I would say to them is, you know, vent your angry spleen on those members of parliament who stole money, who defrauded the, the, the country, on those members of parliament who got other people to take their penalty points for them. Oh. On those great tycoon bankers who nearly destroyed this country, um, I haven't broken any law. Um, when I was elected, I'd already gone public, so the people already knew, and it came up six times on the doorstep. Oh. On four occasions it was positive, one occasion was negative, and on the last occasion the gentleman concerned didn't give a damn as long as his wheelie bin was empty before 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. <laughs> um, what people want is somebody to fight and defend the community of Whitby. And the idea here that um, Mr. Portillo had, uh, had made a, a comment about me, um, and uh, I won't take any lectures from Mr. Portillo. Um, my policies uh, are very strong, very clear, and as a, a fellow politician, although on a different party, um, he would be better attacking my policies and not what is a personal issue. Mm -hmm. And just to f finally finish off, no, please ask me to resign because this is a private matter. And you can do your job as a councillor um, to the best of your ability uh, because you are there all the time. What happens when you're taken away from medical? I mean, who's doing the job then? 
Very, very good question. Um, the best thing I say to people is speak to the chief officer, speak to my colleagues um, of the same party or other party, and see what they say about me. Do you disappear <coughs> when you go for a um, you can, You can be taken physically, and I have actually been taken with other people as well, yeah. so they know. And do um, your family wonder where you are? Um, the close family often wonder where I am. Yeah. But just to finish off the question there, I am not taken during meetings, which is very thankful because I would think there would be quite a, quite a lot of consternation. Um, these creatures do not want attention drawn to themselves, yeah. and the last thing they would do is, is visit or take during a large gathering of people. What do they feel about you talking out now about them? Uh, clearly they don't have an agenda either way, because I would have been stopped if they were against it. Okay. Fascinating. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really interesting. I'm thank very you. pleased thank to meet thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Right, let's get some reaction to that story from Emma in the Hub. The comments have been coming in. Claire said, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to this story. Brilliant viewing and good for Simon. Uh, Susie Quinn said, I think imagination is a wonderful thing, but some stuff is maybe best kept to yourself. Uh, Josie has emailed, I couldn't believe this story, so I've stayed in all morning to watch it. Now I've seen it, I'm speechless. Amazing to watch. And uh, Jackie Findlay asks, why is it that only people with an alien fixation ever get to see them? I've never heard of anyone that has no interest in them having an alien encounter. And uh, finally, Wendy Dolan has emailed to say, good for him, who cares what he believes? As long as he's good at his job, it doesn't matter. Are there lots of people like you around who just haven't come forward? One of the reasons that I've come forward like this is to give strength and confidence to others to come forward. Um, because then the media will change. If a thousand people came forward on Monday mm. and a thousand on Tuesday, by Wednesday, the attitude of the media would be very different. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, still to come, we've 